Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and welcome to our episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the format is out of the way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. The first question for today comes from a lot of you, and that was that you wanted my opinion and thoughts on the fact that Glass might be overpowered right now. So I will say that he's a lot better than he used to be. He went from being probably one of the least picked operators now to being pretty much seen in every single game. Now this could be due in part because of the recent change and just that fact that he's kind of a shiny new toy. He's like kind of a brand new operator right now. Everyone's, everyone wants to play him because of the new mechanic, but to some extent I do agree that they may have gone a bit too far. What I find funny about this entire situation though is that everyone is suggesting brand new mechanics that they could add into the game to try to counter this guy. I heard that maybe Rook should be a counter, his his uh, t-shirts, his armor plating should maybe have a thermal protection to it so that people don't stick out as easily. I've heard maybe Echo's drone should, should be able to dissipate smoke faster because of the fans on the drone itself. Some people have suggested that maybe when Cav uses her silence up ability that she no longer has a thermal image. And while many of these don't make any sense whatsoever, I find it really amusing that everyone's talking about brand new mechanics that they should add into the game, when I think a really easy simple fix to at least tone him down a bit is just make it so that he no longer has access to smoke grenades. The reason why I think that Glaz is as potent as he is right now is because of this 1-2 combo. He has the thermal optic which is already really really powerful. I was not, I was not expecting how useful it was going to be in many situations. So the fact that he's got that on top of smokes where he can just put this into a room and then clear it out all by himself while the enemy has no idea what's going on just seems to push things a little bit too far. And so by giving him flashbangs instead of the smoke grenade, I think that that would be a step in the right direction. That way, he's still very potent if he has teamwork. And this is something that I always advocate. If Ubisoft is able to add in more teamwork components, I'm all for it. So if he has an Ash and they're working together, Ash can throw down the smoke grenade and then he can push on in and have a very strong gadget. But at least he's not able to pull that all by himself. If that's not enough though, and he's still just too powerful, he's still too much of a must pick and competitive and really just in general, then what they can do is just simply eliminate the thermal optic being able to peer through smoke grenades. And we've been, we've been talking about this for a couple of videos now, like I already thought that this was going to be crazy powerful, and lo and behold, it's simply amazing because there's really no way for you to counter this on defense. I mean, sure, every once in a while, a enemy will get lucky. They'll just shoot through the smoke and they'll be able to take you down. But if they're just kind of shooting randomly, but you're able to have the pinpoint precision of a high-powered rifle and you can just take them down, like, you're always going to have the advantage. And it's, it's a massive advantage when the enemy has no idea what's going on around them. All in all, though, we have to remember that this change has been recent. It's been a major update, but it just happened a couple of days ago. A lot of people were claiming that Fuse was overpowered when he got his buff. And while I still think that he might need to be toned down slightly, he's nowhere near as crazy as people first thought when that change was first introduced. People were dying over and over to Fuse charges because they just were not expecting the insane amount of damage. Now that the update's been out for a while, people have adjusted, they've adjusted their playstyle slightly, and it's no longer getting multi-kills every single round like it used to be. I have a feeling that that's also going to be very true for Glass. And while that doesn't forgive how crazy he is right now, and I still think that he could use a bit of a toning down, uh, in a couple of weeks people will start to realize, oh, this is one way of working around it, and it won't seem blatantly as overpowered as it is right now. And so give me your guys' thoughts on Glass. I myself think that he probably should get toned down slightly, but how would you go about it? Would you make it so that he can no longer see through the smoke? Would you rather he just doesn't have access to smoke grenades? Or do you think this entire mechanic is stupid and he should be reverted back to something else? Or do you have other ways of nerfing his potential? Let me know down below. The next question comes from Brian and it is, what do you think a Thermite was capable of opening ceilings where instead of having to use a hatch, you could just make a hole? It does not make sense where he can cut metal, but the, not the metal bars on the ceiling. What's funny about this is that the developers, I think, had the same thought as you did. If you go back and watch the E3 trailer many, many years ago, uh, they used, I think, just a normal breaching charge to open up the ceiling and see down below into the basement when they were playing on house. It was crazy powerful. They could see everyone down below trying to protect the hostage, and I think it was for that very reason why they eliminated it and added in the hatches system. 
You have to remember that a lot of the mechanics that way may not be exactly realistic because you are right. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense why Thermite's charge can't just open up a hole where a hatch can. Like, why is that a thing? But you have to remember that it's probably because of game design and game balance. If Thermite was able just to open up a bunch of holes where people could jump in from the roof and it didn't matter where he placed it, that would be insanely powerful. Some maps on defense would become much more challenging to win if this was actually a mechanic. You don't have to rely on hatches anymore. You could open up holes in a spot where you know you could jump down onto the objective, which would be seemingly protected by a barrier, for example. Drop on down, the enemy is now not able to kill you because you're in a safe location, and then you can maybe potentially take them down. If he's then able to do that on multiple angles around the objective room where he could then coordinate everyone jump down, that would be really, really challenging to deal with. And so I think that's the reason why this is not a mechanic. It sounds really cool in premise, and I think the, the developers agree with you, because when you go back and watch that E3 trailer, it's really impressive. Like, the thought of everything on the map being destructible and having ways of opening up holes and different access routes to the objective, not only in walls, but the ceiling, sounds intriguing, but because of gameplay and game design, I just don't think that it was feasible and probably was detrimental to the game itself. The next question comes from Oliver and it is, what do you think of the new game mode Frontlines on Battlefield 1? I think it's a fun game mode and great that teams work defensively and offensively, but I find it annoying that it goes on for far too long. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Frontlines is a hell of a lot of fun. It's action-packed. I love how it transitions from kind of a conquest game mode on over into Rush. I love those two modes and infusing them into one this is an amazing concept. But as you mentioned, the fact that they can go on for literally an eternity, especially if each team is equal in skill and they're both working together or, you know, amongst their team they're working together, it can result in matches that last for two hours. I've heard players that have had three hour long games because there's no time limits. Now, DICE has said that this is gonna be resolved in the future, or at least I think they have, because this, I believe, is a bug. If you go back to the description of Frontlines when they first introduced it on their webpage, I believe that it said that it did have a time limit so that we couldn't have rounds that lasted forever, because why would you? I believe it just takes into consideration how many MCOMs you took, and if you were the one that took more, then your team is gonna win. And so as soon as they make that change, I think the game mode is going to improve. I mean, I know some people like the long drawn out games because it makes it feel epic. It makes it feel like you are in World War I. The futility of pushing back and forth, just like in Trench Warfare, you don't make a lot of progress. And some people just like that realistic aspect of it. But from a consumer standpoint and a casual gamer standpoint, uh, a lot of people just don't have time for a two hour game mode and there needs to be this time limit. That said though, one of the worries that I have, and this has been happening for basically every DLC for Battlefield in quite some time, is that this game mode that while has a lot of potential and is very fun, is gonna slowly wither away and die because it is behind a paywall. And so yeah, I'm right there with you. I think the mode's a lot of fun. I love the tug of war aspect of it. And while I don't wanna sound like a negative Nancy, I don't wanna be a downer, while it's intriguing, I think it's really cool, I have a suspicion that it will die in a couple of months just simply based off of what ha what has happened in past DLCs for Battlefield. Uh, the next question comes from Tim and it is, what do you think if Castle could place his bulletproof panels over wood panels? This would make Castle a lot faster and it gives the attacking team a surprise because of the second barricade. I kind of like that idea. Now, I know a lot of people say that Castle is weak right now. They claim that he needs to have a buff because if you play in casual or even if you play ranked and you're with a random person who plays as this guy, a lot of the times it seems like he's more of a detriment to your team and actually hurts you more than the enemy. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've ran into a castle barricade when the enemy is on the objective. I have to tear it down or blow it up somehow and the enemy is able to take me down no problem because I'm going through an animation and they know where I'm coming from. Like that happened a lot when the game first released. When you actually work with the team though, Castle is really potent at stopping the progress of the attacking side. If you have a castle barricade and then place a barbed wire directly behind it, they're having to use a lot of explosive devices to get through all of these obstacles. I mean, you're really slowing them down and eventually they're gonna run out of explosive devices and they're gonna have to move through your barbed wire or slowly try to take down one of these barricades. That is why castle is so potent in the right situations. And so with all that being said, even though I don't think that he needs a massive upgrade, I think 
that this would be kind of a subtle way to give him at least a slight buff. This way, if you're trying to barricade a window at the beginning of the round, you don't just get flat out killed by the guy that just spawned directly in front of you. Is this exactly necessary? No, I think Castle is in a decent place right now, especially in a competitive scene, like he is a decent operator, and this would just be a slight buff to make him at least a little bit more potent. Uh, but yeah guys, that is what it for today's Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Would you love to see Castle buffed in some way? Do you think that Glaz is in a good place right now? Let me know down below. Uh, as always, if you would like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. But until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.